Praise the name of the Lord. Well, we are very excited and honored to be able to introduce to you our speaker today. We are so blessed to have Pastors Brian and Candace Simmons with us. And uh, if you don't know Pastor Brian, uh, I want to I want to let you know that uh, he and Candace are really parents uh, in the faith, father and mother in the faith, to so many people in our region and beyond. Uh, they started out. Uh, in ministry as missionaries and Bible translators in the jungles of Panama and had many jungly adventures uh, there. Uh, after they served the Lord there for a time, uh, the Lord called them up here to the frozen northeast uh, where the Lord used them to melt some frozen hearts. And uh, they were pastors of a wonderful church in West Haven called Gateway. And Gateway became just a regional apostolic center under their leadership and just really made an impact uh, all over the state uh, and beyond. Uh, when the Lord called them away uh, from the pastorate, Pastor Brian continued to pursue the ministry of authorship that he was already involved in. He's the author of many wonderful books that we have available for you today, and I hope you will uh, avail yourself of his books on prayer and some of the wonderful character studies uh, that he has of scriptural uh, figures, which are really impactful books. Uh, most recently, he's been working on a new translation of the Bible, which is called the Passion Translation. And it really is a very powerful and devotional way to read the scriptures with lots of tremendous insights uh, from the original languages. And that will be a great blessing to you. And I'm sure he'll share with you a little bit about that. So I want to tell you, uh, church, we had a tremendous meeting here on Friday night. The presence of the Lord was so thick, and um, what a powerful time I know the Lord has for us today. I want, to, I want to ask you to stand to your feet, and please give your very best welcome to our dear friends, Pastor Brian and Candace, as they come to share today. You're amazing. You're more amazing. All right, stay standing for a moment. Would you honor this gorgeous, smoking hot wife of mine on the front row? Would you honor Candace, please? Thank you. <laughs> She's been my favorite wife for 44 years. Okay, let's pray. Father, we really give you this slippery, snowy day, and we thank you that you've gathered us here for one purpose, to lift up one name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus, every knee would bow and every tongue would confess that Jesus Christ is Lord Yahweh, King of the universe, King of glory, God manifest and God enthroned. Bless each one in this room and Lord, I pray that you'll open our hearts as we open our Bibles. Speak to us living words of truth in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, have a seat. And congratulations on getting out. And uh, some of you came from back roads that were pretty rough. And, and uh, you know, did you see the sign over the Long Island Expressway? Uh, it was really funny. It, as a light burnt out on the, the sign. Two, I have it on my Facebook, and it, it, it said, uh, lizard warning. <laughs> and I'm thinking, my Lord, not only do we have snow and wind, now we got lizards crossing the road on Long Island. But uh, we survived that blizzard, and uh, thank you for coming out. And we want to honor Pastor Glenn and Denise <sighs> because they're down in tropics right now. <laughs> Where is it? Tobago? Where, where are they? I have an exact... Trinidad. Okay. Wherever it is, it's sunny and there's palm trees. I wouldn't be surprised that they're watching or maybe they'll log in after a while and, and uh, watch the archives. So why don't we just shout out, uh, Pastor Glenn, Denise, we love you. Some of us really love you, Pastor Glenn and Denise. The rest of us are still dealing with our attitude about you leaving us during a blizzard and going down on the beach, but that's okay. We'll be fine. You know, it's great to be back. We love this house. We love this church. My wife and I are going to begin sowing into your phase two uh, each month. We believe in you. We truly love what God is doing at harvest time. And, and I'm not just saying this um, because I have the microphone, but uh, Pastor Glenn, and Denise and their children are such treasures from God. They are the brilliant mix between 
uh, teachers and scholars and, and, and yet lovers, people who love others and give themselves sacrificially for the body of Christ. They have really laid their lives down for this. And uh, they, they love you. They treasure you. I'm sure as a pastor myself, when you're away from church, I know where your thoughts turn about 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. You're thinking about, well, I hope everybody made it. You know, I hope Pastor Nick does okay. And uh, so anyway, would you just do us the favor of loving them more in 2016 than you ever have before? Can we give it up for all the team, the pastors, the staff? Let's put our hands together and thank the Lord for them. The worship team, the children's ministry, youth ministry, all the office staff, our sound crew, which always gets the short end of the stick, but we, we just bless them. I love local churches. We get to travel every, uh, virtually every weekend. Get a load of this. Combined air miles, my wife and I, last year, 450,000 miles we, we traveled. We were in Israel three times. We were in uh, Australia three times. We were Canada, way off in, into Canada, and, and uh, a number of places here in the U.S. Next week, we go to Seattle and have a tremendous weekend planned there. But uh, we're, we're thankful for this house. We're thankful for God uh, using us. And when you tell the Lord, use me, God, look out. If you just say, use me, Lord, get ready, duck, because he's going to prepare you, and then he's going to blast through you with his glory, with his grace, with his power. So why don't we all say, use me, Lord. 2016. Let's say we really mean it, God. Okay, well, I want to share with you a number of things. Since we didn't have a, a meeting last night, I thought I'd maybe preach two sermons here this morning, if that's okay with you. And uh, sermon number one will only be about two hours long, and then sermon number two, another two or three. But Combined, uh, we'll be out by dark for sure. Everybody say, I have a destiny. I want to talk about destiny real quick and about what 2016 holds for you. I want to give you some prophetic insights, what I believe God is saying. And I know everybody that's, that's anybody comes up with what God is saying for 2016, whether it's the stock market, politics, or, or the church, or the body of Christ. So I'm going to throw my hat into that ring and join the myriad of voices and give you what I believe, because I too have the Holy Spirit of God, and I, what I believe God is going to be doing in 2016. And hang on to your hat, because it's really good. All the doom and gloomers are going to end up this year saying, oh, M-G. I can't believe what God has done. He's going to move in power in our nation, and he's got more surprises up his sleeve than you can imagine. And those of you that want to give up, hide, hoard, go buy guns, and go to the outback of Australia, quit. Because this is the place to be. New England is going to be awakened. This, this uh, Hudson Valley region, this tri-state area, right here at the nexus of Connecticut and New York, God is going to put his spirit and the steel punch of heaven is going to come down and shatter some strongholds of darkness. And he's going to start right in your house. Is that okay? He's going to start in your family and in our mindsets. It's so important that we see where we fit in God's kingdom, that we we see that we're just not a, uh, we're not a minor thing. Not a single person in this, in this room is without destiny. Every one of us have a divinely chosen, designed, even pre-planned pathway to serve, to function, to minister, and to bless the world. I determined years ago that I want to make a difference in the world, not just a dent. I want to make a difference. And when we were in the jungle, the Lord spoke to me, uh, and I'm understating this when I say the Lord spoke to me. But he called us back to North America. And he gave me a word that I lived and I carried for 20-some years. And just recently, my wife and I finally figured out exactly what we think he meant. It's amazing. You, you want God to speak to you, and he speaks, and you're still dumbfounded. What is, Lord, what do you mean? Well, he spoke to me in the jungle 5 o'clock in the morning and said, I have, uh, I, I'm going to use you to bring my word to the nation. I said, okay, well, what's the word? Silence. 20 years I've prayed. What is the word you want me to bring? 
And then I got started doing the Passion Translation. I started translating the Word of God. Some of you are going to get it before I did. And uh, now I'm three-fourths done with God's, by God's grace, three-fourths done with translating the New Testament. I have Psalms and Proverbs likewise finished. Some of that's here on the, in the table in the back room. And if you're really nice, you'll go back and at least look at it. If you're super nice, you'll pick it up. And then if you're just angelic, you'll pay for it. But... Um, I finally realized that the word God wanted me to bring to the nations, English-speaking world, was the word of God. Isn't it amazing how God speaks? I want to give a couple of Passion Translation things away. Uh, first is uh, definitely going to be a woman. Uh, I don't know if a guy would get into a lavender planner, 16-month planner. But um, this is uh, it's like Passion Translation verses, and it's great for your year to come. And it's a 16-month planner, but if you don't get it really quick, it'll end up being about a 10-month planner. So uh, can I give this to somebody that's here that has never met me, wouldn't know me from Adam? You came today maybe expecting Pastor Glenn. Who is this weird guy with the microphone? I want to give this to a friend that's come. Uh, you've not met me at all. Never heard of the Passion Translation. I want to give this to you. Gosh, either you guys are really quiet or you all know about the passion translation hi how are you hi everybody watching online what's your name brazil. oh you're from brazil yeah. saudade let me just pray for you my daughter i pray in jesus name the glory of god would rest upon her uh, i see the lord has brought you here and you've had a lot of puzzling uh, debates inside of yourself as to why and what the purpose is and yet when you get into God's presence you get peace you get joy but yet when you leave uh, so to speak and you you get involved with life you begin to doubt and question why God has brought you here and I just see the Lord really speaking to you as a daughter saying don't second guess me I have a plan for your life that is greater than you can ever imagine. And as you go through this year, I'm going to unfold that plan in unusual ways. I'm going to work powerfully in your family back in Brazil. I'm going to work miracles in many of their lives. And I see you making another trip back to visit them this year. And the Lord's going to use you as a missionary to your own family the next time you see them in Brazil. God is with you. I've don't know if I can pronounce your name, but God is with you, sweetheart, and the plan of God is going to unfold gloriously for you. Can we give her a hand, please? Bless you. God bless you. And the other is, uh, let's give this to one of my bros. It's uh, the book of Proverbs. Anybody want to be a wise guy? Is there um, uh, somebody here? You know, Proverbs is just... It, do you know the word proverb is mashal, the Hebrew word mashal? You guys look very unexcited today. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's the word mashal. And mashal is a homonym. It means a proverb, pithy saying, but it also means it's a word used for kings to rule and take dominion, to rule with power and authority to take the throne. So it's amazing. I've got some secrets here. I have 30 footnotes on the virtuous woman to show you it's not a woman. I'm ruining your mother's day. <laughs> the virtuous woman is not a woman. It's a parable of the last day's church. It is a picture of the radiant bride of Christ rising up. So who is, who is a bro here that uh, has never met me, never heard of the Passion Translation? Hey, good to see you, man. Thank you. What's your name? Patricio. 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 Ustedes de donde? Chile. Chileano. Chileano. Bueno, que bueno. Padre Celestial, te damos... I ask your great power and glory to rest upon Patricio. And I pray, God, that you would use him mightily. I see you preaching the gospel. I see you preaching the word of God. I see you with a microphone in your hand sharing your testimony. I see uh, grace, grace, grace coming from you. And you've come from a different uh, theological stream, so to speak. But the Lord has brought you here and uniting you into this house, blending you into the family and fellowship here. And he's going to give you an oil change. It's going to be clean, fresh, anointing of the Spirit pouring out of you. And uh, I see with an open Bible that you really are a student of the Word of God. 
and uh, I just see revelation. I see like a light bulb being unscrewed. I see your head being unscrewed and revelation pouring in and then the Lord putting it back on. So uh, there's grace and glory and revelation and truth coming into your inner man in Jesus' name. Bless you, Patricio. All right. Come to the next service. I got a couple more goodies to give away. Let's say it again. I have a destiny. I have a destiny. And what a destiny it is. Your destiny is not to make it through this week. Your destiny is not simply to get to work tomorrow. Your destiny is bigger than having a wonderful marriage. Your destiny is greater than getting to go to Aruba on vacation. You have a destiny to look like Jesus Christ. Your destiny is so amazing, so fascinating. You are so loved by God that he is determined to make you into a replica, a duplicate of Jesus Christ. You're going to be conformed, transformed. Uh, you're going to be changed by the love of God to become a different man, a different woman. You're going to end this year so differently than what you began 2016. You're going to look in the mirror and say, I don't know who you are anymore. You have changed. And people around you are going to notice that change. God is going to transform you. Anybody excited about that? Okay, here's the deal. You make noise, I preach better and shorter. Gets real quiet, we'll just keep on going. Lock the doors, ushers. We'll just keep them right in here. All right. There's a cosmic plan and a purpose that is unfolding in 2016. Our highest prize is going to be to know him, to know his resurrection power, and to enter into the fellowship of his sufferings. Every one of us are part of this amazing plan. We are wrapped and enfolded into Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is blended into you. He is mingling into you like a tea bag in hot water. And all he is is being dispensed into you this year. Isn't that exciting? You're going to be a, a person with effervescent joy instead of morose, melancholy. Why is all this happening to me? This year is going to be a year of joy coming back into your life. And if you have joy, then it's going to be a year of greater joy. More joy is coming into you. And your joy is going to be full because Jesus Christ is the Lord of glory. Nothing is going to get you down. Blizzards, bankruptcy, I don't care what it may be. Nothing is going to bust your joy bubble. You're going to live in a pocket zone of favor from God in 2016. My, I would like to have somebody preach this to me. I may go back and listen to this. Our lives are known by God. He's predestined us. He's predetermined our destiny. And the word predestined that's used in Ephesians 1 is literally uh, pororizo. It, it is to have our horizon marked out ahead of time. God has already gone into your future and marked out the horizon of your life. And let me tell you, friend, it's a lot further, more glorious, more expansive than you have ever imagined. I'm here to challenge you to move the false finish line of your life. That God is going to do more in your life. He's going to accelerate his glory. The river of God is going to get deeper and deeper pouring out of you. You're going to live a lot longer than you've ever thought. You're going to accomplish much more for God than you've ever imagined. And God is going to transform you into more of a glorious and beautiful, if I can say that, men and women, into a beautiful expression of Christ on this earth. Now, Ephesians 2.10 says that we are God's handiwork. We are his workmanship. Uh, we are his craftsmanship. A number of translations use different words. Handiwork, I think, is the NIV. There's one translation that comes really close to the Greek word, and it is we are his masterpiece. Isn't that awesome? We are his masterpiece. But that's not what the Greek text really is. The Greek text is we are his poema. We are the poetry of God. You are the lyrics of love on two legs written by a loving father who's designed you specifically and sent you into this earth. You're a word from his mouth that will not return to him void. You will accomplish your predetermined destiny. There is a package deal you got with salvation. It's a full, he flew in, he, you know, he threw in the floor mats. You get it all. When, when you come to Jesus Christ, you get everything he has to give a human being. You cannot receive any more than what he's already given you. 
If you were to get any more than what he's already given you, it would threaten the Trinity. God has blessed you beyond the curse, beyond measure, beyond human comprehension. You have a destiny, my friend. You may not glow in the dark yet, but it's coming. There is a beautification, extreme makeover, transformational, transfiguration process that God has brought you into. Everything about you is going to yield to the glory of God. And you're going to be consumed. The way God brings victory is he swallows up opposition. Death is swallowed up in triumph. The triumph of Christ swallows death. It, it overcomes evil. It, it just eliminates the darkness. Philippians 3.21, it subdues all things to himself. There is an all-conquering Jesus living in you, and my, that lion's going to roar. That lion's going to roar. Girls with swords are going to rise up. Our friend Lisa Bevere, that awesome, uh, she's, uh, she is in love with the Passion Translation. We were on Sid Roth's show with her together. Uh, she's just amazing. I love what she's doing to spark passion among the women of God to rise up. Girls with swords, the lioness arising. I forget some of her other stuff, but it's really good. How's that, Lisa? Maybe she'll tune in and, and uh, I'll get a commission on that. But... There, there is such a glorious, beautiful destiny progressively realized as we yield more and more to the love of God. Would you like to be changed into the image of Christ? Would you like to be transformed where you actually start liking what God is doing in your life? Where you actually appreciate and like praise spills out all the time. I mean, it's, it's like you bump a glass. Whatever it's full of is going to spill out. You get bumped and, oh, thank you, Lord. We praise, one, praise the Lord for what happens. Well, he's going to do it. He's going to change you. And he's shown me the secret of transforming power. I believe, and I'm saying it unashamedly, I believe with all my heart I have been given the key by the Lord's grace for transformation in this year. Are you sitting down? All right. Here it is. It's the love of God. What transforms human beings uh, is the love of God. Now, church loves to do religious stuff, put things on you, you know, double tithe this week, pray uh, eight days a week, fast 41 days. I mean, uh, there's a lot of duty that we have. You know, you do things for the Lord. You've got to keep doing. It's like do, do. Anyway, but in Christ, it's done, done, isn't it? And what we need to do is to become a receptacle, to be a carrier of this glory, to carry, like Mary, the glory of God within us and to receive more of his love. I'm telling you, folks, 2016 is the year of the love of God being revealed like never before. The number 16, you know, numbers in the Bible mean something. Three. Uh, God is three in one, isn't he? The resurrection on the third day. The number three is significant. Number four speaks of the universality. You know, the four winds, the four seasons. The number four. The number five is the number of grace in the Bible. Six is the number of man because we're born on the sixth day. And seven... The number of perfection, God's completion, and perfect number eight, number of new beginnings. I'm not going all the way to 16, but let me jump to it. Number 16 is the number of the love of God. It's the biblical number of the love of God. John 3, 16. God so loved the world. Everybody say so. If you get the word so, you got the Bible in two letters. He so loved the world. Such powerful, glorious love came from heaven, wrapped into human skin, born of a virgin that came, invaded our planet to, to uh, uh, infect us with the virus of the love of God. That we would know this love that's past finding out, the width, the length, the depth, the height. And then we would become love dispensers to the nations of the world. That we would carry this love revelation, the love theology to the nations of the earth. Get ready to discover this year so much more of how much God loves you. 16 is also the number of expressions of love in 1 Corinthians 13, you know the love chapter? Paul lists 16 qualities 
to the love of God. I'm going to read the entire chapter. It won't take me a minute here. 1 Corinthians 13, if I were to speak eloquently in earth's many languages, I'm reading from the Passion Translation. This will be published June 1st. And in the heavenly tongues of angels, yet if I don't express myself with love, then my words are nothing more than irritating noise, like that of a clanging cymbal. If I were to have the gift of prophecy with a profound understanding of God's hidden secrets, if I possess unending supernatural knowledge, and if I had the greatest gift of faith that I could remove one mountain after another, but have never learned to love, I'm simply nothing. If I were to be so generous as to give away everything I owned to feed the poor, offer my body to be burned as a martyr, but without the pure motive of love, I gain nothing of value. Love patiently waits even in a difficult relationship. Love is gentle, consistently kind to all. It refuses to be jealous when blessing comes to someone else. Love does not brag about one's achievements nor inflate its own importance. Love does not traffic in shame and disrespect nor selfishly seek its own honor. Love is not easily irritated or quick to take offense. Love joyfully celebrates honesty and gives up a search for what is wrong. Love is a safe place of shelter, for it never stops believing the best for others. Love never takes failure as defeat, for it never gives up. Love never stops loving. It extends beyond the gift of prophecy, which eventually fades away. It's more enduring than tongues, which will one day fall silent. Love remains long after words of knowledge are forgotten. Our present knowledge and our prophecies are but partial. But when love's perfection arrives, the partial will fade away. When I was a child, I spoke about childish matters. For I saw things like a child and reasoned like a child. But the day came when I matured and I set aside my childish ways. For now we see but a faint reflection of riddles and mysteries as though reflected in a mirror. But one day we will see face to face. My understanding is incomplete now. But one day I will understand everything just as everything about me has been fully understood. And until then, there are three things that remain. You know what they are. Faith, hope, and love. Yet love surpasses them all. So above all else, let love be the beautiful prize for which you run. Sixteen qualities of love. Sixteen is the number of love. 2016 is going to be the year of a love expression. I was um, uh, in my home the other day and, uh, you know, just doing my deal and, and uh, I heard the voice of the Lord inside of me say to me, Brian, where does love come from? Where does love come from? I said, it comes from you. It comes from you. I think the key to loving people is to know how much God loves you. I'm going to finish with this. Folks, I want you to really start this year off as we finish the month of January. I want you to start this year on a quest to find the love of God in a new way. It won't hurt. It may change you. People may want to be around you more. You start being a carrier of the love of God. And don't for a moment think that you know it all. Don't for a moment think because you know English that you understand the love of God. Because Paul and the apostles all state that it's past finding out. It's illogical. It's beyond human reasoning. It is transcendent. The love of God, like every quality God possesses, it is so infinite. It's so uh, supernatural that our tiny minds are such a small place to try to contain the love of God. Only our spirit is big enough because we come from God. We're, we're, we're the reflection, not a faded photograph, but the living expression of Christ made in his image. And we are capable of possessing this love and then dispensing it and giving it away to other people. So that's my word of encouragement to this beautiful church and to you, the beautiful people that dared come out on this snowy day that this would be a year that you commit yourself like never before 
to enter into the secrets and mysteries of the love of God. Start with saying to the Lord, I love you, God. I love you. I want to know more about you. I want to enter into the experience of your love. I want it to melt the mountain of my pride like wax. I want it to obliterate every unloving thing inside of me. I want to be a see-through servant. I want to be in an aquarium for Jesus to swim around in. Huh? And people would see uh, somebody else. They would hear an echo in my voice. They'd hear a voice in my voice that is speaking and piercing their heart when we share the love of God with others. Would you like to receive a baptism of love? Would you like to receive a fresh infilling of the love of God? Would you stand, please? Thank you, Father. Let's just lift our hands up to heaven like, like we really are excited about going there. Yeah. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, you've been so kind to us throughout our lives. We have a destiny marked out ahead of time. This is the year of embracing the love of God, your love like never before. This is the year of experiencing what we've only talked about in the past. I ask God that anyone in this room that feels unloved or love has not been given to them, or that they have given love away, but it has not come back. I ask, Lord, that you would refresh their heart. Let every tender heart respond to this word, Lord Jesus. Let every human soul in this room respond to this call to enter into deeper measures of the love of God. I pray that Harvest Time Church, as we go through phase two together, as we walk into the new building, as we walk into this new season, that you would make us even more uh, capable of loving others. Let love win every battle. Let love prevail over every family. Let every disappointment be washed in the love of God. Let a wave of your love sweep over us. Abba, Papa God, Yeshua, Jesucristo, Espiritu Santo. We ask for the love of God to sweep over us. Even as the mercy snow has covered the earth, like a mercy kiss, the blanket of the planet here in this area, the snow. You make us whiter than snow. Your mercy, your blood, your kiss, your embrace. Now put your hand over your heart and say, Lord, light my heart on fire. Let my heart burn with passion for you. Let my heart burn with fresh love, first love. I want to ignite first love again for you, God. No, not puppy love, not infatuation, but the love that gives, the love that offers it all and says it's no sacrifice. Oh, God, we take you as a seal over our heart, a burning seal of love. Seal our hearts in this love connection. Awaken love in our heart. Awaken holy desires. That it would not be religious duty. It would not just be responsibilities that, that prevail in our hearts. It would be love. Love. Agape. The chesed, the Hebrew chesed, the loving kindness of God. The tender mercies that greet us every morning. If you just touch your forehead, please, and let's, Lord, let's just ask the Lord to cleanse our minds. Father, every unloving thought, everything that hinders love, everything that gets in the way of true godly relationships, thoughts that are selfish, self-centered, bitterness, any rage, anger, quick to take offense or easily irritated, Lord, let these thoughts be dominated by the love of God. Let our minds be washed in the pure river of God. So come, Lord. We dedicate ourselves this new year and the days to come, the weeks to come, all the ups and downs we may experience. But, Lord, we dedicate our hearts afresh. 
not to a church, not to a religion, but to the love of God, this wonderful, mighty, outpouring, the volcanic expression of the love of God, breaking in, breaking in, more, Lord, more, more, break in. Let the lonely take heart. Let the discouraged breathe deep again. Let the sleepless, let them suddenly rest in peace. More, Lord. Those who feel they're unloved, I ask that you would embrace them with your wraparound presence. Wrap your mighty arms around them, Lord. Show them how greatly loved and esteemed they are. You've marked out our destiny, the horizon, ahead of time. And we thank you, Lord. Thank you for your great love.